I'm going to do a little inbox preview of this kit I have here, which is the Hobby Boss Leopard 2A4M can, which is the uh, standard uh, main battle tank of the uh, Canadian Forces. This is our current uh, main vehicle right here. Uh, this kit came out quite a bit later than the series of Leopards that Hobby Boss has done that they've released they did a whole bunch at one time and they were super economical priced and they're they're not known to be the greatest kits in the world but for their price point I think they're they're perfectly fine and they're definitely better than the uh, Revell kit and there's a lot more expensive better options out there now like with the uh, uh, the two A6s and A5s by RFM and, and companies like that but Hobby Bus does all the very unique variants, even like low production vehicles like this one, which was very surprising to me that they came out with this. And it's a much later release, so I wanted to see what they actually did to the kit. See if it's been updated since the original ones, or if they it still goes back to the original ones, um, as far as like accuracy wise and everything. I'm just going to show what's in the uh, box here. So this is our basic uh, box art here and on the side you can see these vehicles are just in green so they're not uh, anything special looking and my cat I guess is going to help with the uh, review now so um, anyways uh, but a really nice thing they show here is the, uh, the decal sheet these little um you can see on the box are these little black uh, squares that are all over i believe they're attachment points for camouflage nets which are pretty popular um among nato vehicles they they c completely cover the whole vehicle and netting and i think those are anchor points for the uh, actual netting and it's nice that they've included a, a decal because uh that would be uh, impossible to paint all of those all over the vehicle. It would, it would just be an absolute nightmare to do all of these. And then there's a small uh, standard marking sheet here. This is all uh, in Chinese. I don't know what that all says. The kit number is on the side of the box, which is 83867. And on the side, there's a blurb about the uh, vehicle and some history. They give creds here, I guess, to guys who help them out in the development of this kit, but they really don't, they, they, uh, they tell about their, they tell about the, uh, these individuals here, but they don't really say what they did to help. Um, I'm assuming they provided photographs and, and information in that, but uh, we got Anthony uh, Seawards and Jason uh, Bobrowicz which is cool that they gave them credit here on the box. And now I'll go into the, uh, the kit itself. And you got the standard like Trumpeter Hobby Boss sheet. You've only got one option, which is green. And they're calling for a the 303 green which would be the same as the basic uh, Russian color I don't know why it wouldn't be NATO green but that's your color call out here you're pretty much limited to to that and then your standard Hobby Boss style instructions there's only 13 steps so it didn't look doesn't look like a, a huge undertaking so I'll go over the parts now and uh, the upper hull is here. It looks pretty good. Uh, nice texturing and details on it. Does it must be uh, definitely a unique piece to the Canadian version with this style of front on it, I would think. And the hull. Oh, it's got fully detailed underneath, which is nice. One piece lower hull. And the Okay, this is definitely has to be a unique Canadian turret. Actually, I'm not sure if Hobby Boss does the standard A4 
which the standard A4 just doesn't have these uh, angular uh, armor on it. So I'm guessing it's just it's not an add-on. It's it's all molded in one piece, and the the lower turret here with something armor or something on it. Which one thing that people were complaining about is this little notch out here in the comparisons of the various manufacturers. And I think this is uh, like, who cares about a notch like this? Because, I mean, you're never going to see it. The way the Leopard turret is anyways, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty flat down on the vehicle. Um, let's see, here's the photo etch sheet, which is nice. It's not huge. I'm not sure exactly what's in here. This is a clear parts in here. Nicely protected. And then, oh, more photo etch for your bins, I guess. And copper wire. I prefer um, myself just like regular, like cotton, like rope style instead of the brass wire. But I mean, just kind of is what it is. That's the way they do things. And they've really got some of these nicely protected. This is all the uh, the armor, like the uh, the slat armor that you can kind of see it here. I'm not going to take them out of the bags or anything. I mean, there's there's not much need to. And it, it looks okay. At least it's not photo etch. And then here's some of the parts. This is sort of disappointing, but I mean, there's not much you can do about it. That it's a two-piece gun barrel, and then you've got the extra, like the beefy armor on here. It looks pretty good so far, and the gun manlet parts. There is texturing. If you can, I don't know if it'll show up, but there is slight texturing. Very nicely scaled texturing. Because it's very easy to overdo, and it looks like they've done a nice job. Again, these are like your your heavy upgraded uh, armor package on here. And again, with the very nice texturing on there. Like, it's not overdone. I mean, I suppose if you wanted to uh, redo it and make it thicker, you could. And the belly armor, and which is nice, it's a separate piece. Not that anyone's going to see the underside of the tank and the suspension parts. I'm guessing there's wheels for the suspension and various other little pieces. Those are all very nicely detailed. They're uh, Same with the wheels. They're kind of nice. Also, I should mention, this kit comes in quite a bit pricier. It's it's maybe triple the price of the uh, standard release. And here's your uh, running gear, which all looks, everything looks excellent. And then uh, the uh, decals for the, uh, I say, I believe they're anchor points. Almost, you could say almost like Velcro. These are the, the places where you would attach the, uh, the netting, I, I believe. I'm not 100% sure. And then we have the tracks, which to me, I thought this was the only upgrade that it was going to get really nice tracks. Very nicely done. Individual links, and it doesn't look like they'll be too much of a pain to clean up. However, I don't see a jig for them. It would have been nice to have a jig. I'm going to look at the instructions in a moment, but here's the tracks. Nicely done. They're, they're hard, uh, hard plastic, hard plastic end caps, which is fine because they take paint better than the soft tracks. I just want to see if we get a jig in here. But everything looks really good in it. Uh, no, there's no there's no jig provided here. You just have to put them individually. But it doesn't look like a pain. It's not a major undertaking. So this kit actually, this kit is excellent. It looks really good. I have no complaints about it. And I say it's definitely not like their older releases that people uh, 
complained about and consider them to be cheap, this is definitely a unique kit and has all the unique nice parts for the Canadian specific version. I think it's actually like the coolest looking leopard anyways. Like this would be the one I would I would really want to do. Um, there's not too much more to add about it except that it it looks like an excellent kit. It should stand up with the other leopards out there. The barrel might be the only thing I would say that's probably a letdown in this kit because it's that two-piece style which I, I don't mind so much but a lot of the newer companies usually mold them in one piece now. So anyways this looks like a, a decent kit which is the the Leopard the Leopard 2A4M can which is Canadian and the kit number is 83867. So thank you for watching.